Hello and welcome to today's Bruker Micro CT training video. The subject of this video is an overview of CT Analyzer. CT Analyzer, or CTN for short, is a program for quantitative analysis of 3D Micro CT datasets. It provides an environment in which all the ingredients of 3D quantitative analysis are present. One can select a volume of interest, one can select thresholds or, say, or perform segmentation, one can perform quantitative 3D and 2D analysis, morphometric analysis, in many different ways, and there are many advanced image processing functions, including automation and the writing of task lists or scripts or macros, automated sequences of operations. CT Analyzer provides a single solution to generating numerical quantitative data both on dense atometry and morphometry for a wide range of micro CT applications and indeed even applications involving 3D data from other modalities such as MRI or confocal microscopy. The screen you are looking at now is the characteristic raw images page of CT Analyzer. When you first open CT Analyzer you just see a green screen but you open a data set by clicking on the yellow button in the top left corner. This button is present in all Skyscan Bruker Micro CT programs. It means just open a data set. A data set consists of a large number of cross-sectional slices. Selection of any one of these slices, which may be in the BMP, TIFF, JPEG or PNG formats, allows the opening of the whole data set. Now there is a lot of functionality within CTN and it may be hard to work out for yourself where it all is and what it means. So we will step through it in a way that will help you to understand the structure and how to get things done in CTN. So when we open a data set as we have just done now, we see four corners. There is one corner in the top left where we see an example of a shadow projection. It's called the shadow projection window and there is a red line showing us our current location. It's important to understand the geometric relationship between the shadow projection and the cross sections that we reconstruct from a micro CT scan. In this case the shadow projections are looking from the side at a molar tooth, whereas the cross sections are orthogonal or at right angles to that view and are generating a cross section in the plane of the red line. If we can think of the red line as representing a two-dimensional plane extending towards us and away from us. If I take the little blue slider, which is on the right-hand side of the second window, the dataset window, I can pull that slider up and down and it changes our position. And then we can see the relationship between the shadow projection image for navigation and the cross-section slice, which is at the location of the red line. So the top left hand image is the shadow projection. As well as pulling the slider up and down we can double click at different locations on that to move around in the data set. Now on the top of the window to the left to the right of the shadow projection window is what we call the data set window which lists the cross-sectional slices of all the cross sections in the data set and it shows us which one is currently selected. The one that is currently selected is displayed immediately below in the large window to the bottom left of the program window. There are a number of ways of navigating up and down. One that we've already seen is using the slider which works in real time. There is another slider 
on the right hand side of the window, a scroll bar in fact, but without a blue tab. This will change the displayed window, showing different numbers of slices, but it does not change the displayed position. To do that, we have to then click on a cross section to cause it to jump to that cross section. So we can use the slider on the left or the right to move our view of the cross sections up and down with or without moving in real time in the data set. Now once a cross section is selected and highlighted in blue, if I now go to the keyboard of the computer and use the up and down arrow, I can use the up and down arrows also to navigate up and down through slices. This will only work if a cross-section slice is highlighted, in other words, if the dataset window is active in Windows Management. Now, if that wasn't enough, there are even other ways of moving up and down. One of them involves the wheel of the mouse. Nowadays, all PCs have a wheel in the middle of the mouse between the right and the left buttons. And with the cross-section selected, I move the wheel forward and my view goes up. But this is equivalent to moving the scroll bar on the right, because the wheel by itself does not move our current selection. However, it's very easy, if one is rolling the mouse wheel, to then alternately click on the left button to place us at the different positions. So alternate rolls of the wheel and clicks with the left button are an easy way to quickly navigate up and down in the dataset. Now above the dataset window, you will see a tab with the word raw images. This means that this, this is the raw images page of CT Analyzer. Now, as we will see, there are actually five different pages or views in CT Analyzer that take us through the process of the analysis of a dataset. Those five steps are represented by the five buttons starting from the third button in the button bar. Remember, the first button is to open a dataset. The second one is to start and stop animation through dataset cross sections. And then starting from the third button are the five pages of the program. The further buttons represent additional uh, functions in the program. So the first button here is the raw image preview. The second one has the tooltip entitled Region of Interest Preview. Clicking on this will open an additional tab above the dataset window and you will see a red background. You will also see new buttons appearing, which were not there before. We are now in page two, Region of Interest. This allows us to draw with left mouse button freehand drag and drop any shape which could be used as a region of interest. In other words, that our measurement and analysis would be restricted to that window only. The shape can either be a freehand drawn shape, or it can be a fixed shape from a menu selectable from this button here in the CT and ROI buttons. For example, we could choose ellipse, and we could set for ourselves an elliptical shape. So that's page two. The third page, represented by the third button here, is the binary selection preview. Clicking on this opens a third button above the dataset window. And now the buttons that were present up here for ROI disappear because we are no longer at the ROI page. However, this pane at the bottom right hand corner that we've not really talked about yet because it's been mostly empty now is full of functions and information. So at the binary page we see a histogram which tells us the histogram of a reconstructed attenuation which is converted into grayscale of the current cross-section that we are looking at. So we can see peaks representing the enamel and the dentin for example in the tooth. This page is important because it allows us to set a threshold 
we can decide which density phase we wish to analyse. We will discuss this later in a few moments. The binary page has all the functions related to attenuation or density. So those would include selecting a threshold or a segmentation for analysis, and also the measurement of density data, which might be in the form of attenuation coefficient, or in the presence of a suitable calibration, it could be Hounsfield units or bone mineral density. Or alternatively, I can simply choose the arbitrary scale of grayscale. So the binary is the third page. And what's the fourth page? The fourth page, if we click on the fourth button, is called Morphometry Preview. The Morphometry Preview is where we get to obtain some actual measurement results. This can be in two dimensions or in three dimensions. We can click on a button, the third button, which is for 3D analysis, presents us with a menu of parameters many parameters that we can measure in true three dimensions. Now, <clears throat> another way to analyze a data set is what we call 2D slice by slice, whereby individual cross sections can have measurements based on perimeter and area, which are performed in the individual cross section slice only in 2D. But this information can be integrated across the whole data set. We will discuss in further videos and, and later in more detail these analysis parameters, but they're beyond the scope of this overview uh, training video. So the fourth button brings us to the quantitative analysis. And the four buttons that we visited so far, in many cases, represent <coughs> the complete process of micro CT analysis of a, of, a, of a 3D scanned data set. We would open the data set and view it in the raw images page. At the region of interest page, we may or may not apply a region of interest. In the third page, we would select a threshold to choose whether we wanted to analyze dentin or enamel or the whole tooth for example, and then having made the selections both of region of interest and of threshold, we would then proceed to perform a measurement in 2D or 3D at the morphometry page. There is, however, a fifth page which allows us additional functionality and flexibility in our analysis, and that is the custom processing preview or custom processing page, the fifth of the five buttons in this row at the top left. If I click on that button, a progress bar runs across because the program is generating an additional copy of the data set in its memory. With custom processing open, we see a different content in the pane to the bot bottom right of the program window. By default, the pane will open in the third out of five tabs, which is called internal. This means all the functions, they are sometimes called plugins, that are present within CT Analyzer itself. We can see the whole list here. We'll discuss one or two of these in due course. Custom processing provides us an alternative way of working within CT Analyzer. Instead of, for example, interactively choosing a threshold by moving tabs, let's say like this, to select the uh, enamel of the tooth, we can run what is called a plugin by selecting it first and then clicking a run button. This will open a window that allows us to choose either global thresholding, a simple thresholding based on <coughs> black and white threshold values, or alternatively a wide range of more advanced 
automated thresholding techniques. If we click default, it will read whatever value is currently selected at the binary page. In this case, that is 123 selected to binarize the enamel. And having made our selection, we click continue, and that selection is then performed. Now the result that we get from that is exactly the same as the result displayed at the binary page. So why have a second way of doing the same thing? Well, one of the reasons for that is that there are additional image processing functions here at the custom processing page which are not available elsewhere in the program. For example, there is a function called morphological operations, which, if I run it, allows me to perform morphological operations such as erosion and dilation. If I chose erosion by one pixel in 3D space and applied it to the image, then all of the white binary objects get one pixel thinner by the removal of a single pixel from the surface. If I do the opposite and perform dilation, all of the surfaces are made one pixel thicker. If I perform an operation called closing, which is a combination of dilation and erosion, and increase the radius to 2, then you will see that it will modify the image by the removal of small dots and a kind of smoothing of the binarized data set. Likewise, there is a function called despeckle, for example, which allows me to remove isolated pixels of either white or black color according to what is required for our analysis. As a simple example, we can see small black isolated voids within our cross-section and I can remove them by running despeckle, selecting remove white speckles which are less than, for example, let's say a thousand voxels and run it in 2D space and those objects will disappear from our cross-section. So in custom processing we can add to the essential functions of region of interest selection and thresholding provided in the other second and third tabs by additional special image processing functions. So that is an overview of the five pages of CT Analyzer. The raw images page, region of interest page, the binary selection page, morphometry page, and the custom processing page. To illustrate further how these pages work together, let's take the example of a simple quantitative analysis of our tooth. The tooth consists of three phases of interest to a dental researcher. They are the enamel, the high density layer around the outside at the crown of the tooth, the dentin, which is the bone-like filling or the main body of the tooth, and there is the root canal in the centre. Let's say we want to find the volume of the enamel. Then we would begin by going to the region of interest page. Now we want to analyse the entire tooth, so there is no need for us to apply a restriction and analyse only part of it. So this third button from the right deletes the region of interest and by default the entire data set becomes our volume of interest. Note by the way that the volume of interest can be restricted in its vertical height as well as in the cross-sectional area. We can move the sliders from the top and from the bottom to choose, let's say for example, if we choose to analyse the region of tooth containing enamel only, then once the enamel finishes at a cross-section just above 400, we could go to that level and set it as the bottom of our selection so that only that part of the tooth is analysed. <coughs> 
Note also that if shapes are selected at the region of interest page, for example, if I set a square region of interest on one level, and a few levels up, I select a different shape, such as a circle, you'll see that in between the two selected shapes, interpolation is performed. So the intermediate are shape, shapes are in interpolated, uh, causing a smooth gradation from a square to a round cornered square and eventually a full circle. Region of interest of different types can be interpolated between each other. For example, a fixed shape, such as a circle, can be interpolated with a freehand shape. So the complex three-dimensional volumes can be defined using this tool. Again, to delete region of interest shapes, we click on this button third from the right up here. Having selected a region of interest, we move on to the binary selection page. Here we can see quite clearly, in a histogram, the de density phases present in our cross-section. By default, when we go to the binary page, we see the attenuation histogram corresponding only to the current cross-section slice, at the, which at present is 563 going to another cross-section level, changes our histogram. However, above the histogram display there are two tabs called From Image and From Dataset. Clicking on From Dataset creates a smoother histogram display which is now integrated across all the slices of the dataset. If you want to binarize the enamel, the enamel is the highest density phase present. And so our upper threshold selection is set to 255, the maximum density. The lower is set at an intermediate point between the density of the enamel and of the dentin, such as a value of 123 or 124, for example. Now we could make measurements at the morphometry page, but in this case we will move on to the custom processing page. And we will apply the same threshold by clicking thresholding and run and applying the threshold value of 124 to 255. Now at various cross-section levels we might find disconnected binarized objects that we would prefer to exclude from our measurement. And the function dspeckle allows us to do this. I can run dspeckle, for example, and I can choose the function sweep, and I can set it in 3D space to remove everything except the largest connected object. In this case, disconnected objects will disappear. I can safely use this extreme form of despeckle here because the enamel is all connected as a single object. Now I can measure the enamel itself by going to another plugin which is called 3D Analysis. I first click on the plugin so it is highlighted and then I click on Run. A menu of parameters opens up. I will choose for the sake of speed, in this case, only the basic values of volume and surface area. I will select text table so that the results are output in a text file. Clicking continue performs a measurement. To find the results, I go to the output report page, the fifth out of the five tabs at the custom processing page. And out of the two open buttons, I click on the top one under the heading Output File. A text file with the extension changed to CSV to allow opening in Excel will then open up and the results of our analysis are displayed. If 
I move that into our window so that we can see that, we can see, for example, that the object volume, the volume of all the binomized pixels, is this number right here, which is 185.95 millimeters cubed. So about one-fifth of a millimeter of enamel in our tooth. So much for the enamel. Let's step back to the binary image of our tooth and make a selection that would allow us to measure the dentin. So our upper limit this time would be the value of 124, separating it from the, in the enamel, but the lower limit of 65 would represent the densi density range of the dentin. Now this time I want to analyze the whole tooth, not just the crown, because the dentin extends right to the bottom. So on the right hand side I take these sliders representing the vertical axial selection, I pull the bottom one right down to the bottom right down to the bottom of the data set. Note that I can control the axial or the height selection of the region of interest from any page of CT Analyzer. I don't have to be at the region of interest page to do this. So we've selected the whole data set and here is our threshold. But you may have noticed a problem. There's an artifact of a single line of pixels around the outside of the enamel. That is an inevitable artifact because a gradient of density from the enamel to the surrounding space will inevitably go through the intermediate density range of the dentin on its way from enamel down to air, resulting in a surface artifact of, of a layer of binomized pixels. This is sometimes called the partial volume effect. If we were to measure this in the morphometry page, then we would have to accept the presence of this artifact, which would add a small error to our measurement of the dentin volume. However, one of the advantages of performing the measurement in the custom processing page is that we can eliminate that artifact. If we click the first button under the plugins heading and reload the data set and reapply our modified threshold of 65 to 124, that peripheral artifact is again visible. But if I run morphological operations and choose the operation opening and run it just with a single ra pixel radius only, then that artificial line largely disappears. Furthermore, there are some small pixels on the surface, which are also artifacts of partial volume effect, that can also be removed by performing once again the sweep operation to remove everything except the largest connected object from the image. And now we are left with a clean binarization of just the dentin of the tooth. And if we want to measure that, remember that in MicroCT what is measured is what you see the binarized image in black and white, the white is considered the solid, the black is the space. So to measure something, one has to first choose the appropriate region, the appropriate threshold, and then run the analysis. What you see is what you get, to use the old phrase. So with the appropriate binary performed, segmenting the dentin, we then run the 3D analysis plugin, Let's say we measure again simply the surface area and volume. And to get the result, once again, we go to the output page and click on the top open button. This time, the object volume, which was only 160 or so cubic millimeters for the enamel, now is 700. 57, and the other parameters of surface area and centroid and surface to volume ratio are also listed here. Now there are many other forms of analysis of the tooth, such as of the root canal, that we could also look at, but there is 
not time in this video to go into all those details. But I hope that this example is a useful overview of this five-page structure of CTN. Once you understand that structure, at least then you won't get lost and you'll know where you are in the program and where you need to be to perform the function that you need to carry out. So just to recap, we load the data set and we find ourselves in the custom we find ourselves in the raw imaging page. We move on one page to the region of interest page where optionally we can choose to restrict the area of our analysis. We then move to the third page, the binary page, where we choose to analyze the material of our choice, such as dentin or enamel. Note, by the way, that when you're choosing a threshold, you can choose to either binarize the solid material or, alternatively, an inverse threshold would allow you to analyze the root canal in the center. After the third binary page is a fourth page called morphometric measurement, which sometimes allows us to make morphometric measurements if no further processing is required. And the fifth page, the custom processing page, is a page that allows us to have an extended range of functions and also to put functions in an automated sequence. For example, I could choose thresholding and set it with a value of 124 and 255 to binarize the enamel. By clicking plus in the top button row, I add this to the task list. I add a second function of called dspeckle in which I say specify to remove any disconnected objects by sweeping all except the largest objects in 3D space. And finally, I perform 3D analysis to measure the volume and the surface area of the enamel. These three operations, once listed in the task list, can now be run in an automated sequence. And the results can be viewed again by clicking on the output report page and the open button. So now we can see what happened in our task list. Here is the details of the data set that we analyzed. Our first operation was thresholding 124 to 255. Our second operation was to sweep in 3D space and our third operation was the 3D analysis and here are the results of that 3D analysis showing once again the volume of the enamel to be 186 millimeters cubed. So thank you for your attention. Further videos will expand on the detail of specific applications that can be formed in CT Analyzer and there's a very large number of such applications that can be fulfilled using this program. Thank you.